Hello, everyone. Welcome back. I am Christine Dixon of The Ordinary Sacred. And in this video, I'm going to share an example from none other than Martha Sweezy's book, Internal Family Systems Therapy for Shame and Guilt. Um, and this example is of a sleepy part because I have encountered this in myself and in many clients. And so I thought this would be a helpful example. Sometimes we think, oh, I'm just falling asleep uh, because I'm tired. Sometimes that is the reason. But if you ask the part, it will tell you exactly why. Sometimes it's because your body needs rest. And other times it's because I didn't like what you were about to do there. You were getting close to something vulnerable. So I took you out. And uh, it's amazing to, to really take seriously whatever these parts do in our system. Okay, so Martha says, all parts can unblend and make more room for self. They can choose to do that, but they have to be willing. It is important to remember that they always have reasons for blending. And we have a job, which is to discover and address their reasons effectively and respectfully. That said, protectors often cite habit as a way of maintaining the status quo Habit, as I discuss elsewhere, is not a protector concern. It is a protective cover for concerns that have not yet been addressed adequately. So when something becomes a habit, uh, in a lot of therapeutic models, we just kind of uh, try to retrain that habit, kind of force it in a different direction. And that's just not the, the strategy in IFS. Um, not because it's just not strategy, but it's just not effective. Um, I've found, and I encourage you to experiment with that. Forcing any part of ourselves to do something is not getting at the root, right? So if we have resistant parts to something we see as good, right? Like exercise or eating healthy or getting enough sleep or something like that, because, oh, it's just habit, Right. It just means that, that that part's concerns have not been adequately met yet. Okay, so this example is with a client named Adam. Adam is a 59-year-old Moldovan Jewish American. He had a protector who put him to sleep whenever an inquiry got close to the time of his mother's death from a stroke, which he witnessed when he was four years old. Um. So the timing can be really indicative, right? When a sleepy part comes in, every time you're getting close to a certain vulner vulnerable or wounded part, um, you can be assured that it's doing that for a reason. So the therapist says, would the sleepy part be willing to separate and let you help the four-year-old Adam? And so Adam's sleepy part and Adam is embodied in this part, his eyes are drooping, and he says, it can't. So it's it's not willing. And the therapist says, would it let you be awake if we agreed not to approach the four-year-old right now? And Adam's sleepy part closes, he closes his eyes and he says, hmm, maybe that is a good idea. So again, sounds like the sleepy part is very afraid to go to to this time, uh, this really traumatic time in Adam's life. And so letting the part know we are not going to make, we're not going to force our way to that. It sounds like you really don't want us to go there. So we won't. So the therapist says, it's a deal. Take your time. So then Adam leans over with his head in his hands and rubs his scalp. He shakes his head and then he sits up with his eyes wide open and says, okay, so the sleepy part left with the promise that they wouldn't go to the four-year-old. The therapist says, are you here? And Adam says, I'm coming back. And the therapist says, I want the sleepy part to know that it can be direct with us. It can say, no, we will not go to the four-year-old without its permission. Okay. And Adam nods. Uh, and I just want to st pause there because this is so important in the inner system. 
the self, I say naturally speaks nonviolent communication and never forces its way. It never steamrolls over parts. It never says we've got to get here now. It always respects the concerns, the boundaries, the limitations of parts, um, never forcing its way. So but the therapist says, but there is one thing that you should know. The sleepy part can let you stay present and awake if it decides that it is safe, right? So there is the potential to go to the four-year-old if the sleepy part allows it, um, but the sleepy part has to believe it's safe in order to do that. Adam says, how do you know? And the therapist says, well, are you always sleepy? And Adam shakes his head. So do you fall asleep uncontrollably? So she's kind of, I think, checking for a physical condition here. He says, no. The therapist says, you don't normally fall asleep during the day out of the blue. Adam shakes his head. So the sleepy part is choosing to put you to sleep sometimes. And I trust that it has a good reason. But if you could help the four-year-old safely without being emotionally overwhelmed, would it still need to put you to sleep? Adam pauses. He says, I fell asleep all the time when I was a kid, so they put me in therapy. The therapist says, yes, the sleepy part has done this for a very long time. Um, I just want to go back up to what she said earlier. Um, and this is the confidence I think that the therapist or practitioner has, or if you've had enough experience in your own system, you have confidence that Every part is doing what it's doing for a reason. So if you have a sleepy part that comes in, a dissociative part, um, a self-harming part, a, an inner critic, um, you know, a, an OCD type part, an obsessive compulsive part, you always know that it is doing that for a reason. It absolutely believes it has to do it or else. And so there's this, this certainty, this confidence about that. Uh, and you can kind of offer that to the client if they don't already have it. Um, okay, so the the sleepy part's been doing this for a long time because the event happened when he was four, right? So Adam says, it, meaning the part, is not sure that it can change. And the therapist says, how old is it? He says five. So just a little bit older than when the his mother, um, you know, when when the trauma happened. And the therapist says, if it didn't have to put you to sleep anymore, what would it rather do? So this is kind of being the hope merchant offering, you know, what if there was one that could help this four-year-old, it wasn't vulnerable anymore, and you didn't have to do this job of, you know, putting out him to sleep, what would you rather do? Just hypothetically. And Adam said, play. That makes sense for a five-year-old, right? The therapist says, the sleepy part puts you to sleep to keep the four-year-old out of mind. But if the four-year-old felt better, the sleepy part could play instead. Would it like to meet you first and decide if that's a good plan? We could do that without going anywhere near the four-year-old. And then Adam intends inside for a few moments and says, yes. So again, there's such respect, right? Um, we don't have to go near the four-year-old if if this part, who's actually five, right? The sleepy part is also very young. If it can look at Adam, who's not a part, and see one who is compassionate and curious and not steamrolling over it, respectful, appreciative, uh, confident, creative, connected, all those things, right? It can see the Adam who's an adult, who's not a part, who is self and have relationship, right? Experience with that self. Then that five-year-old part could trust, oh my gosh, there's actually one here that can help me because I'm only five <laughs> and he could help me with, with the four-year-old. Um, and we can show that without necessarily going to the four-year-old. And then maybe you can or Adam could propose an experiment and say, okay, now that you trust enough, are you willing to let the Adam who's not a part go to the four-year-old just a little bit and see what happens? And you can rush back in. If you think it's too much, you can 
put Adam to sleep. Um, so, and I'll just read the, the last notes that Martha has. She says, extreme protectors can and do share the spotlight with other parts all the time. Adam, for example, did not fall asleep in just any situation. People in the grip of a disinhibition, like falling asleep, using substances, dissociating, binging and purging, having temper tantrums, etc., can often still function in school, hold a job, make dinner, exercise, raise kids, paint paintings, make music, write books, and on and on. So if a part says it can't unblend, do not take that literally, but do appreciate that it has a reason for not wanting to unblend. And if its reason seems invalid in the current context of the client's life, um, for example, Adam Self could actually take care of his four-year-old. Remember that it was valid in the past and that this protector may still be living in the past with the exile. So that's why in IFS, the process of updating can be so powerful. Sometimes, you know, again, the sleepy parts in front of you and, and you say, who do you see when you look at me? Or who do you see when you look at Adam, who's not a part? You might say, I see a four-year-old. Oh, okay. So when you see Adam, you see a four-year-old. Let's have the four-year-old sit next to Adam. Now, who do you see, right? Or Adam can update the part. I'm actually, how old was he? 50, 59. I'm actually 59. And it's so funny. Often the parts go, what? Oh my gosh, you're so old. Or, you know, something like that. But um, the updating process, you know, and then you can take the part around your life and show them what you're capable of doing. Um, and of course, bringing them and the four-year-old out of that time, going in, witnessing, reparenting, um, retrieving, bringing them into the present and unburdening is, is uh, healing at the root so that now the sleepy part has no reason anymore to have to come in. So if you would like to leave a comment, let me know if you have a, dis a sleeping or dissociative part or distracting part or parts that take you out and see if you can get curious about why they're coming in when they are. And just ask them, what are you afraid would happen if you didn't come in right now? And just get an answer directly from them. I'm looking for the stop record. <laughs>